In this video, I will describe a general estrus cycle and compare it with the menstrual cycle of a human female. For comparison, I have aligned ovulation in both the estrus cycle as well as the menstrual cycle. At ovulation, in both the menstrual cycling animal, the human, and an estrus cycling mammal, prior to ovulation, this is called the follicular phase. And it's called the follicular phase because in both types of animals, a dominant follicle secretes abundant estrogen into the blood. And so here we can see estrogen is going to increase in the time leading up to ovulation. Similarly, in an estrus cycling animal, a dominant follicle is going to secrete estrogen into the blood and so once again, we can see that there is an increasing level of estrogen in the blood prior to ovulation. Note that the follicular phase of both the human and the estrocycling animal, um, it's called the follicular phase because the follicle is secreting estrogen and therefore it is the dominant structure during this period. While the pattern is the same, an increase in estrogen secreted by the dominant follicle in both types of animals. As we can see in this, uh, in this graph down here, the follicular phase is much shorter in um, the estrous cycling animal. So it is much shorter. Also, this phase can be broken into two different subphases. Okay, so as we can see down here, these are the terms that are specific to the estrous cycle. For the first portion of the follicular phase, and so I'm just saying portion and not specific numbers of days because um, it varies from animal to animal. For example, in a mouse, the entire cycle is only four days, as opposed to in cattle, the entire cycle is 21 days, which is actually what we see in this image here. In a dog, it's about 60. And so for the first uh, brief portion of the follicular phase, this is called proestrus. And during proestrus, um, the follicle is preparing for ovulation and is developing um, in largely the same ways that we see in a menstrual animal. Okay. Um, next, there is a very brief window, right? And when I say brief, I mean this is about 12 hours in a mouse and even in um, cattle, in this example here. Um, in dogs, it's about seven days. In sheep, it's about two days. So variable um, period here. But this phase is called estrus. And so this is when the animal is um, fertile. This is when the animal is behaving in a way that is going to promote reproduction. So very receptive to uh, intercourse. Also, this is the time when you might see bloodshed. Okay, so as I can see over here, during estrus, bleeding might be possible, not because the endometrium is being shed. Right, so nothing at all like in the menstrual cycle when the entire endometrium is shed. Okay? Instead, um, blood might be shed right around ovulation just because there is additional blood flowing through the genitals. Um, there might be a pheromonal signal in here for the male animal as well. This is not a period. This is not the endometrium being shed. This is just residual blood um, from increased blood flow to the genitals. Okay? So that is a huge difference between menstruation, and estrus. Okay. So once again, the follicular phase is the phase leading up to ovulation in both menstruation as well as in estrus, the estrus cycle. Okay. In estrus animals, this phase is broken into proestrus when the follicle is developing and estrus when the animal is receptive to reproduction. Okay. At ovulation, as we can see down here, Again, the secondary oocyte and corona radiata are going to be um, carted off towards the uterus, and the follicle is going to degree or is going to further develop into the corpus luteum. In the case of um, an estrous cycling mammal, the corpus luteum is going to secrete almost entirely progesterone, as opposed to up here, where we can see the corpus luteum secretes mostly progesterone. So the second half of the phase is still very much the progesterone dominant phase but um, it also secretes quite a bit of estrogen as well. So we still see pretty high estrogen levels in the second half of the cycle. 
not so down here in this cattle. So progesterone is going to be greatly upregulated because of the dominance of the corpus luteum. This phase in both the uh, menstrual cycling animal as well as estrocycling mammal is called the luteal phase because the corpus luteum is dominant at this part of the cycle. So here this is the luteal phase and the luteal phase of the ovarian cycle in the menstrual cycle as well. Okay. In the estrous cycle, the luteal phase has a different um, or has another name and that's called diestrous. And so this is the period when um, the embryo um, may be implanting within the uterine wall. This is the period where the endometrium needs to be maintained in order for um, possible uh, development of offspring. Okay. The end of the luteal phase is triggered by a different mechanism in menstruation or the menstrual cycle versus the estrous cycle. Just as a reminder, in the menstrual cycle, if there is a fertilized egg, it will ultimately secrete human chorionic, human chorionic gonadotropin to sustain the corpus luteum during this period. If there is no fertilization within about 10 days after ovulation, the lack of HCG will lead for the corpus or lead to the corpus luteum automatically degrading into the corpus albicans. So in the absence of baby or baby hormone, in fact, corpus luteum automatically degrades. And with it, um, as the corpus luteum cells die, less and less progesterone and estrogen are um, secreted. Similar in a lot of ways, but not certainly not identical. Um, in the estrous cycle, the uterus is what is responsible for triggering the degradation from the corpus luteum into the corpus albicans. If the uterus does not detect an implantation, it is going to release another hormone, PGF2 alpha, and this hormone triggers the corpus luteum to degrade into the corpus albicans. The result is the same. As the corpus luteum degrades, that is, it goes through luteolysis, a right, breakdown of the corpus luteum, less and less progesterone is secreted. Okay, so this triggers the end of the luteal phase. Um, and in some estrocycling animals, the next proestrous phase, or the next follicular phase, comes immediately after the previous luteal phase. So this would be something like um, a mouse, right, which just kind of reproduce or has the ability to reproduce over and over and over again, right in the row, um, as opposed to a dog, which has... Um, one or two estrous periods throughout her throughout the entire year. And so when that is the case, um, an estrus is entered, right? So as estrogen drops, as progesterone drops, they both stay pretty low for several months at a time, right? maybe a year at a time until um, she is able to reproduce again. And then the next pro estrus would be signaled and followed by estrus, etc. Okay. Um, a little bit more about the development of the follicles as well as these gonadotropins. Okay. The ovaries, just like in a menstrual cycling animal, are filled with these primordial follicles. During diestrus, that is the luteal phase, the or a pool of follicles are recruited and they continue their development. Some of those are selected. And then finally, as the end of the luteal phase approaches, one of these, or a few of these, depending on the animal, are going to be um, selected as the dominant follicle or dominant follicles. Okay, The rest of these follicles that have been developing are going to undergo atresia, so breakdown. Okay, so only the dominant follicle is going to be secreting estrogen by the end of this cycle. Okay, what is driving this development of follicles is follicle-stimulating hormone. So we can see follicle-stimulating hormone is fairly high during the luteal phase of the estrous cycle. Okay, uh, luteinizing hormone here 
is pretty low until this orange line here um, designates the end of diastrus, that is the luteal phase and the beginning of the follicular phase. Here, we see an increase in LH until around about ovulation. Okay, so ovulation is here. LH triggers ovulation and stimulates the remaining fo follicular cells to develop into the corpus luteum. Okay, that is similar to the menstrual cycle. here we have this surge of LH right before ovulation which also triggers the follicle to develop into the corpus luteum. What is different however is the fact that FSH is higher during the luteal phase as opposed to in the menstrual cycle where it is still very low during the luteal phase. Okay, so that is a significant difference here. Again, these, this follicle-stimulating hormone is higher during the luteal phase um, in order to recruit and select and develop, um, ultimately, the dominant follicle. And then this dominant follicle is going to um, regulate uh, you know, this phase here, the follicular phase. Once again, this has been... Uh, a comparison between the menstrual cycle and the estrus cycle. Okay. Key differences are the length of the follicular phase is much shorter compared to the luteal phase. Okay. The bloodshed, if there is any bloodshed, is during estrus, so right around ovulation, as opposed to at the end of the last cycle and the beginning of the next cycle when the endometrium actually degrades and is released as a period. Here in estrus, the endometrium is reabsorbed um, and kind of recycled for the next time. The uterus in an estrus cycle is what triggers the degradation into a corpus albicans as opposed to the lack of HCG in the menstrual cycle. Okay, um, Similarities Follicular phase is still dominated by estrogen in estrus and menstruation. Progesterone dominates the luteal phase in both as well. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that this helped to clear this, this concept up a little bit for you.